see you guys in the dark. This may not be scary to some, but it does creep me out a lot now, thinking about what could have happened to me. This happened close to a year ago. My fiancé, who is 20 years old, who I, as a female, 20 years old, are in college and lived in a student apartment building near campus. We lived on the second floor, and the gym happened to be on the first. There was a stairwell near our apartment that typically was used. This stairwell always freaked me out because it wasn't very well lit, and it was open underneath the bottom stairs so it would have been easy for someone to hide there. There was a door on the right-hand side that happened to go out into the dark, not-so-busy road. My fiancé, who will call him A, and I decided to go work out at around 10 p.m. on a Saturday night. The gym was not very busy at this time. I think there was maybe one other guy there, but since it was Saturday night in a college town, there were a lot of people coming in and out of the building for party. The gym was an L-shape, with full-length windows that showed the hallway. I spent most of my workout right in front of the glass near the door, while A was over in a different section of the gym. This means that it was not obvious that we were together unless you saw us walk in together. A little bit into my workout, I noticed two guys looking at me as they walk right behind me on the other side of the glass, and into the stairwell. This is not unusual, so while I took note of it, I was not very concerned at this time. A few moments later, they walk by once again, going the other way, with more guys this time. They stare a bit again, and while I'm more on guard now, I figured that they were just letting their friends in since you need a key card to get into any door in the apartment. And now they're going back to their apartment. And that would be that. But no, this continues to happen, where they will walk by again, and again with more guys, every single time, reaching probably about eight guys in total. After a couple of rounds with them as a group, I start seeing them walking by individually, and most of them are not trying to conceal their staring at all even when I look directly at them. I go tell my fiancé so he can watch for it also. I was a little spooked, but I wasn't concerned since I was not alone. I finish up my workout, put away the weights that I used, and I roll up my yoga mat. During this, I'm facing away from the hallway, so I did not see this, but my fiancé said he saw one of the guys go into the bathroom that's right between the door and the gym that goes directly to the stairwell, and the whole time I was putting my stuff away kept peeking out and staring directly at me. I usually go back up to my apartment when I'm done because A's workout are longer than mine, but I was not about to go into that creepy stairwell alone after all of that, so I had to go and sit next to him and wait for him to be done. The next time this guy looks out of the bathroom, he sees me with A, who is a pretty large guy sitting at about six foot four. He walks out of the bathroom and then leaves. Nothing else happens, and when my fiance is done, we leave. We don't see any of the other guys again. We believe that the guy in the bathroom was supposed to be watching for me to leave, so that when I went to the stairwell, some of the other dudes would be there and probably take me on, and take me out onto the road and into a vehicle. But when they saw that I was with him, they decided that it was not worth it. This is obviously speculation. Might not be what was happening, but I can't help but to think that that was their plan. From there on out, I would not walk to or from the gym by myself. We moved not too long after that. I do feel much safer in our new place, though. Thank you, Future, for sponsoring my video. Future is a fitness app that pairs you with your own highly credentialed personal trainer who will build you custom workouts you can complete on your own time, wherever you happen to be. It's like having a personal trainer in your own living room. Upon signing up, you'll have a video call with your trainer who will then design a fitness plan unique just for you. Futures trainers are equipment agnostic, meaning if you're only able to do bodyweight workout at home, or if you choose to go to the gym, the coach will build it into your plan. Between voice prompts, video check-in calls with your trainer, and messaging within the app, you'll feel like your trainer is always by your side. Together, you and your trainer will work together to achieve your fitness goals. If you happen to get bored with your plan, your coach is there to change it up for you and keep you on track. Futures trainers have trained everyone from personal athletes to working professionals. No matter your level, the trainer meets you where you're at. No matter if your goal is to get back to the gym, lose weight, or feel your best self, there's an expert future trainer who knows exactly how to help you. If you want to finally hit your fitness goals, then I have an offer just for you. If you use my link, you'll get your first month with a future trainer for only $19. Think of what you can accomplish during that month. 
go to tryfuture.com forward slash nightstalker to get started. Also, my link is below in the description. I was 25 and living in Los Angeles in a big apartment complex. One day at the apartment gym, a man started talking to me while I was working out. He seemed a little off, but I thought he may have a mental disability based on his behavior. So I responded to him politely and went about my workout. At this point, there were several other people in the gym and in the vicinity. I didn't think much about any of this. About 15 to 20 minutes later, the gym had cleared out. It's nighttime, maybe around 9 p.m. I'm on the treadmill, running, and the man re-enters the gym with an FBI hat and a badge around his neck. He's holding something in his hands. I think maybe handcuffs. I'm not 100% sure about this. Anyways, he tells me that I'm going with him, as I am under arrest for making hand gestures. I'm terrified at this point. I'm feeling extremely vulnerable, as I'm literally running on a treadmill. Mind you, I'm 5 foot and around 100 pounds, so I really don't know what to do or how to get away. I have no idea how much time went by as I'm still working to piece the story together since I remembered it just a little over a year ago. Honestly, I don't remember how I got out of that situation. My husband had to remind me of a lot of the detail. But thankfully at some point during the encounter, a woman had come into the gym. So I got off the treadmill and ran back to my apartment to call the police. I had my husband walk over to the gym just to make sure that the guy wasn't still there and going after any other women. He happened to be gone. The police had showed up, only mildly cared, and gotta love living in a big city. However, our apartment building cared, and was able to identify the man based on the surveillance videos that they had. I assumed that he was immediately evicted, as I never saw him again. The leasing manager said that she knew who did it before they even saw the tape, and he had been a problem for quite a while. I went to this small sized school that had K through 12th grade in it. It was a really huge building that circled a statue. So on one side of the statue, that was the elementary school, and the other is the middle and high school. The middle and high school had different bell systems, but we all had shared the same teachers for certain classes. Jim was one of those classes. A mix of middle and high school kids. I happened to be a freshman at this time. We had a teacher who we called Mr. Fouts. Small, muscular dude. I stood over him, and at first, he was really cool with me. Everyone had loved this guy, even the teachers did. I didn't see the hype in this dude, but he was okay. I never got a creepy vibe with him. It wasn't until we had to do some sprints or whatever, and I was pretty good at it. He had come after class to discuss a few things with me. I did, and he wanted me to join the girls' cross-country team. He said that I was exceptional and could use a runner like me. I told him that I wasn't interested in playing, even though I did like running, and he was okay with the fact that I was on the fence about it. He told me how my speed would help get the team to some contest or whatever, and also said how nice I ran. I didn't think anything about this, but I told him that I would consider his offer. Over the course of a few days, he started to talk to me more often, then stared at me. We did more running activities than normal. Girls were always on him, and whenever he asked to see me after class, there was at least two girls in his office. He never let off on me joining cross country, so I started to bug my parents. There happened to be an event at my school, which my parents would have an opportunity to meet him. I presented Mr. Fouts to my parents. I didn't notice anything weird after they had chatted. My stepdad had pulled me to the side and told me that I wasn't going to join, and that I needed to switch out of gym. I was mad, and I was also confused. I asked him why. He told me to wait until we had gotten home. When we finally got home, he told me that he didn't trust the guy. He seemed like a predator, and the reason why was because while they were talking, Mr. Fouts had turned to check out some other girls. Then he mentioned how nice I ran, my form, and the way my legs looked as I ran. Said I had the perfect body for a runner. I was in disbelief, told my dad to stick it where the sun didn't shine. He was hysterical, and told me to open up my eyes and look even closer. I did hate my dad at that moment for being overly protective, and dismissing the fact that Mr. Fouts was just a well-liked guy. After that, I noticed the little things. Like he had looked me up and down. He always found a way to pull me out of class to talk to him about my parents. He started to call me Lolita, like the book. Then the final straw was. It was just the two of us. I had asked him what he wanted, and he had me sit down. He had this disheveled look on his face. 
the office was dim. He asked me again if my parents reconsidered. I told him no, and then he chuckled. I was feeling really uneasy and scared. He got up, sat next to me, told me that I had a big opportunity in cross country, then proceeded to tell me how nice my legs were, how fit my body was, as he talked to me in a sexy, whispering voice. He put his hand on his shoulder and slowly moved down my back. At this point, I told him clear as day, I'm not doing cross country. I have other important things that I have to do. I stood up, and I left. I was scared and feeling gross. I went to my next class and spent it, going over in my head what had just happened. I didn't think to go to the office or anything, as they had everybody at that school on his side. I didn't tell my stepdad, because I didn't want him to be right about the guy. That and he didn't do anything. So I shut my mouth, and I ignored Mr. Fouts for the rest of the first semester. We went back to how Jim usually went, and the girls were still hanging with him. Later on, he had left to become a firefighter, and never returned. I still hear that some of the girls are friends with him on social media and stuff like that. I'm almost positive that he did something with some of those girls. He's one of the reasons that I stopped playing sports. It really sucks, because I loved it. I was in elementary school when this happened. We had a gym teacher, Mr. B. He was super nice and loved playing the fun little games that we all played in elementary school with all of the kids. Everybody had loved him. He did, however, have his favorites. There were several girls who he would ask to help him with equipment, and occasionally they stayed in the gym after class so they could help with putting things away. After class, Mr. B would ask who wanted to stay behind and help clean up although we'd all raise our hands and wave wildly in the air, hoping to be picked. Mr. B generally had picked the same three to four girls. I was always so disappointed because I wanted to be picked. Well, finally my day had come. I was picked to be one of the helpers. It didn't seem strange at first, because there were several of us helping put away things after class. Once we had finished putting things away, he asked if I wanted to have some candy. I told him that I did, and he invited me into his office but he made sure to tell me not to tell any of the other kids because he didn't have enough candy for everyone else. I felt really lucky to have been picked to clean up. Now, I was getting to hang out with Mr. B and have some candy. How exciting, right? We go into his office. He sits down at his desk. There was a little candy jar on his desk that was full of Hershey's Kisses. He asked me if I liked chocolate. I responded that I do. He then handed me a piece of chocolate and says, come here and sit on my lap. I didn't think anything of this being seven or eight at the time. I happily obliged. Nothing strange had happened. He didn't touch me in any way, at least that I can remember. I didn't think anything else of it. I sat on his lap for a couple of minutes, enjoying my candy, and then he told me that I had to return to class. I was disappointed, but I returned to class and went about my day. I was never asked to be one of his helpers ever again, to my great disappointment. Many years later, people from that elementary school had reached out to ask me if I had heard what happened to Mr. B. Apparently, he had been arrested for abusing several of the female students. Someone had finally went to the authorities over 15 years later. I was shocked, to say the least. I looked at the court filing and read through all of the documents. I was even more shocked to see all of these incidents had happened at the same time that I was in elementary school, and he happened to be my gym teacher. I can't help but to think about the three or four girls that he would always choose to be his helper. I had no idea what made him choose not to do anything with me. But I thank my lucky stars every single time I think about this sad and disgusting situation.